hello guys uh how are you doing how are you doing so i think some of you or most of you there you are still confused or you still don't understand the concept of of time frame combinations on how to use uh different time frames all at once before you can take a trade i think that concept for some of you is still you still find it to be challenging but i'll try and make another video so in this video i'll just try and and try and, and and you know sort of simplify it or explain it further so that you understand because honestly you can't trade with one time frame like you can't so i'll give an example with uh, i think i always tell you that when you are trading you need to look at you need to use at least two at least two or three so you can use two you can use three right so and the time frames that you decide to go with they need to be so you normally the, the time frames that are used it's a uh, monthly weekly daily h4 h1 m15 yes the rest uh, we don't use them that much you can use them if you understand them but for now i think you should pick time frames from this and they must be next to each other i can't say i'm going to use monthly and m15 it does not make sense because the in terms of the the scale i mean how many candlesticks of m15 do you have in a one candlestick of monthly you see the the, the, the so the chances are or 90 percent of the time you'll find that uh the structure that you're having on monthly when you switch down to m15 it looks way completely different because of what there's too many m15 candlesticks in the monthly chart in a monthly bar so that's why when you are picking your time frames, they must be next to each other. If I want to use a monthly, I'll use monthly and weekly. Or maybe monthly, weekly and daily if I decide to go with three. Or if I want to go as high as weekly, then I can do this two. Or I can do this two. Or I can do this two. Or I can do this two. It's totally up to you. So whichever time frames that you think they will work best for you. And remember they are there. There are things that you need to take into consideration before you can decide on which time frames you want to trade. And one of them being your account size. If it is still small and you can't trade weekly, daily, monthly and all the stuff. And also the amount of time. Do you have a, a full time job? If you do, then you can't trade M15. I mean, where are you going to get the time to monitor that M15 chart? Anyone? So those are some of the things that you need to consider before you can try and decide to, you know, decide on which time frame you're going to go with, right? So in this video, I'm going to make an example using a daily H4 combination. Let's say you consider all the factors and then decide that, come to conclude that um, you are going to trade daily H4. That's your combination, right? So now you need to understand if you decide to go with the daily and h4 you need to understand what each time frame in your combination you're going to use it for so in this case you've got daily what are you going to use the daily time frame for and then you've got h4 right so when you're approaching the markets you always start from the top and work your, your way down so that's why you always hear of top-down analysis because when you're checking the markets you always start at the top and work your way down so in this case you can check the daily on what is happening on daily and then come to h4 where you'll be thinking of taking trades because this you decided to go with the daily h4 combination but remember when you're if you're going with these two so things like things on this side they what i mean by that let's check out this uh, that all the time frames on this side they don't matter to you meaning things like h1 m15 they don't matter to you because they are small time frames compared to the ones you're trading so the structure on on uh, m15 is not gonna affect your analysis on h4 you see because someone is trading m15 or m5 remember they can they can hit TP with just one opposing bar on your on your time frame. They hit TP, they are done, and that one opposing bar on your time frame didn't change didn't change any structure to your analysis. So that's why I'm saying everything on this side it doesn't matter to you. And then the time frames that side, those are the ones that you should be worried about because they are higher th than what you are trading, and you know we can't go against them. So 
even though you are trading daily and h4 you need, still need to keep in mind be mindful of the structure on weekly and be mindful of the structure on monthly you don't want to go against them you can go against them but not when the thing has just hit for instance if monthly is just hitting the monthly supply you can you know insist on buying but if the monthly we are here the monthly here is, is the is the i mean here we do i was talking about the resistance so let's let's say this is our resistance on monthly this is our support and the monthly the price is in between yes we can trade in either direction we still have way bigger room for us to hit that and way bigger room for us to hit that but if the price is here and then your age for saying buy you see that you are you are gambling now because this is a monthly resistance so that's why i'm saying that the, the time frames on your left you need to be mindful of and the ones on your right they don't matter that much so now it becomes a question you know what do i use daily for and what do i use h4 for daily it will be our trend or uh, our 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 direction basically our direction so when you are when when you are uh, analyzing you always start at the top and then when you get to your age to your daily that's when you'll decide if whether whether daily is going up or if it's going down or if it's going sideways so if you decide it's going up it means what you're going to do on h4 must agree with the direction of the daily you don't want to go against the higher time frame on your sequence that's how you're going to use it and again you can look for things like uh, even on daily you can also get stuff like engulfing or pin bar but remember you're not going to trade them if you're getting engulfing here if i get let's say bearish for instance bearish engulfing it means when i'm going to h4 and i find a reason to sell i can sell why because my daily there's engulfing there and remember engulfing and pin bar they this is the most important one about this ones they need to be at significant levels so we don't we're not going to trade every engulfing pattern we see on our chart it needs to be at either a support level or a resistance level or at a trend line when you get those ones then you know when i'm going to h4 i need to do something that agrees with what i found on daily that's it and then when you're a on your on your daily and again here you need to mark you need to mark the trend line you need to mark the trend line on on on, on your daily and also mark your support and resistance so that when you're trading you know where you're going to exit basically so now you are done with all of that you've decided on the direction that your daily is going and then you go to h4 on your h4 you still need to mark your uh, support and resistance and also the trend line so remember here the support and the resistance could be uh, and also you need what you need a pin bar or engulfing is not going to work for you here so on this time frame you need pin bar that's what you're going to use why because here you can put your buy or sell stop you can trade those ones but the pin bar on daily we can't trade it with the with the buy stop or sell stop i already explained that one so i said the pin the the, the buy stop and sell stop you can only do it on your execution time frame or the smallest time frame on your on your time frame combination so after marking all of this and then if they agree with the direction of that it means every time the price if let's say daily is saying up right every time the price comes to your support you can look for this or if the support is very small you can just go and put what a buy limit because you feel like the risk is not that small so i don't have to wait for confirmation i can take the whole thing but if it's big then wait for the price to go inside and that's when you can start selling for searching for reasons why you think it's gonna reverse that's how you trade and then now because remember you're only trading daily and h h4 it means when you're moving from let's say you're taking buys from daily support when the price goes up to daily resistance you need to exit your trades and look at how the price reacts there if the price is inside daily support or resistance and it gives you pin bars here you can trade them in the opposite direction or you can if you are skeptical you can because remember when you're going up towards that resistance you'll have this you can wait for this to be broken then maybe this will give you what this move that broke uh, your h4 trend line it can give you what engulfing on daily then it means when you get the move up you can sell that i hope it makes sense so 
to keep the thing short when you are having to if we decide to use two time frames the high time frame is for main direction and the small time frame on your sequence is for execution so that's where you're going to take the trades and execution can also include that pin bar method that i showed you where you're trading it with what buy sell stop or sell stop thank you i hope i've clarified the 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 the, uh, the, 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 the concept the yeah, time from combinations on how how to use it and it shouldn't confuse you guys it shouldn't confuse you because it's very important that you understand it otherwise you are going to end up you know sometimes you'll be confused as to okay i know i'm looking at h1 but what is it that i should be looking for hello if h1 is your smallest time frame you're looking for trades you're looking for trades in the direction of your highest time frame that's it just keep it that simple then you see you'll see that most of the time you'll always come up with you you'll be coming up with the you know the conclusions that are that make sense and the price will be respecting those all right guys i will see you in the next one so i think after this one i'll just make one more view and then i'll call it a, a day so i think i'll do be four videos for today because i feel like yesterday i didn't give you anything so that's why i, I just need to pump you up with the information and then i'll leave you like that maybe for a day or two for you to digest all of that and then if you have got questions remember you put them in the comment section and then i'll try by all means to answer them but remember keep in mind all your questions must be pure price action must be based on pure price action so you're not going to ask me about pin i mean uh, about uh, working the, 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 the indicators and stuff no i want concepts that are price action that's it all right guys so technical stuff we don't do uh, the, 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 you know, fundamentally and 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 then and, and, and indicators and stuff so those concepts we don't want to involve them in our trading all right chap guys i'll see you in the next one